For many people, a nightmare is the most intense dream they'll ever experience. These are these bad dreams that wake you with a start, your heart is pounding, you're short of breath. They can feel more intense than normal waking life. If you have nightmares or suffer from recurring ones, they can completely derail your life, but they can also be useful. I know this because I've had them myself and I also study them now as a sleep researcher. We can study nightmares in sleep labs to better understand what's happening as they occur. To do this, we place electrodes on the scalp to measure brain activity, and other electrodes measure heart rate and muscle tension, including two electrodes that we place just above the eyebrow. If you ever notice someone's frowning while they sleep, they might be having a nightmare. Basically, when people experience nightmares, they have more arousal during their sleep. So we see increased wake-like activation in the brain. Uh, we also see increased heart rate and respiration rate. And finally, this arousal leads to a full awakening um, when someone is completely overwhelmed by the emotion of the nightmare. Most nightmares are marked by intense fear or anxiety, but they can also be any negative emotion. So anger, sadness, even grief, any intense negative emotion. And most nightmares have recurring themes. So these themes can start when you're young and then reappear throughout your life over decades. Um, some common themes include being chased or falling, uh, out of control cars, your teeth falling out. Um, these are very typical nightmare themes that we see. Ernest Hartman was a dream researcher who dedicated his life to the study of nightmares. And he often said that nightmares are the most useful dream because you can clearly see the emotional concern of the dreamer. So one example he often used was the tidal wave dream. And he saw this dream theme reappearing in many of his patients after they experienced um, a major life stress or a major event in their life. Uh, and I actually had a tidal wave dream after ending a long-term relationship moving countries, and starting a new job, I had this tidal wave dream. I'm on a cliff overlooking a beach, and I know that a tidal wave is going to come. The wave builds like a wall of water, and I see heaps of lifeless bodies floating in the wave. I remember suddenly that my ex-boyfriend is down on the beach. I feel intense anguish and fear and run out screaming his name. He notices the wave and turns to run up the cliff. As he passes me, he holds out his hand to bring me with him. But now I'm completely stuck. I'm unable to move and frozen in fear. And the dream ends with the impending wave upon us. So it's actually quite common for me to experience uh, dreams like this of almost drowning in a tidal wave uh, whenever I go through major transitions in my life. And the dream isn't narrating exactly what's occurring in my life, but it's picturing or representing my emotional state, and it incorporates certain things from my life as well. So Ernest Hartman would say, this is why nightmares are so informative, is because they so clearly picture the emotion of the dreamer. So I feel helpless, I feel overwhelmed, and thus the tidal wave. So why do we have such nightmares? Um, there's two main theories. In one view, it's normal for us to experience bad dreams in response to stress. And these dreams help us to process the ups and the downs of life. So Rosalind Cartwright is another pioneering dream researcher who studied how dreams help us adapt to stress. So in one of her studies, she looked at people who recently went through a divorce. And what she found was, those people who had bad dreams about their ex-partner in the period following the divorce were actually better off a year later and had less depressive symptoms a year later than people who did not have bad dreams about the divorce. Um, so this finding supports the view that dreams are kind of an overnight therapy. They help us to process difficult situations and adapt to them. Another view is that bad dreams serve an evolutionary function. 
So in this view, bad dreams help us to practice responding to threatening scenarios. Um, and this theory is called threat simulation theory and it's developed by Antti Ravanzua. So in one recent study, for example, um, researchers looked at the dream of being unprepared to take an exam, which is a common nightmare or bad dream theme. They looked at a sample of students who actually had to take a major medical exam um, in the future, and they found that those students who had bad dreams about the exam, anxiety dreams about failing the exam or being unprepared, actually performed better than those students who didn't have these bad dreams. So this supports a view that dreams are helping to prepare us to respond to stress in the future. So these are kind of these two views that bad dreams help us to process and respond to stress in the past, and they also help us to prepare for stress in the future. However, it's clear that nightmares can become a real clinical issue if they become too frequent, too distressing, or occur persistently over long periods of time. About 5% of the population experiences nightmares on a weekly basis, and having such frequently disturbed sleep can be severely harmful to mental health. So frequent nightmares like this are associated with symptoms of anxiety, uh, depression, and perhaps most importantly, increased suicide risk. So one recent meta-analysis found that those who suffer from frequent nightmares are 2.6 times more likely to exhibit suicidal behaviors. Imagine you're jarred from sleep by disturbing imagery. Perhaps you dreamed of a cheating partner or the recent death of a loved one or losing your job. And now you're alone in the dark with these disturbing thoughts, um, unable to sleep or even afraid of falling back asleep. Having sleep loss like this leaves the mind in a highly distressed state, and actually the brain is less able to regulate emotion after sleep loss. This creates a vicious cycle where you're experiencing distress during your nightmares, you feel distressed when you wake up from your nightmares, and you're actually less able to deal with stress during the day. So it's clear to see how nightmares um, can trigger the worst circumstances for people with mental health issues. Fortunately, there's simple and effective treatments for nightmares. The most common treatment uses a technique called imagery rescripting, and the idea is to modify the nightmare through waking imagination. So you might recall your nightmare and then reimagine the nightmare with a more positive ending. And then you visualize this alternate version of the nightmare in your mind, mentally rehearse it for 10 to 20 minutes during the day. And this simple waking visualization technique actually reduces nightmare frequency and nightmare distress and even associated symptoms like anxiety and depression. In one of my studies, a participant had a bad dream of being trapped in a prison cell. She said she remembered that the floor was these black and white checkered tile, and on the wall opposite her, there was this kitchen drawer that was just opening very slowly as if it was haunted. And she sensed this malevolent presence that was opening this drawer, and she felt completely frozen in fear. When we were discussing the dream, I asked her, what would make you feel better in this situation? And she said, I think if other people were with me, I would feel okay. So she closed her eyes and she reimagined being in the prison cell, but this time she was standing in a row with other people and they were all holding hands. As she was imagining this, she suddenly gasped and she said, oh my gosh, the black and white floor is being pulled further and further away from her and the wall was moving further and further away in her vision, as if an optical illusion. And she opened her eyes and just looked completely relieved and was no longer afraid of this, this bad dream. So using this simple waking imagination exercise, she was able to come up with a new ending to the dream that was more positive and she no longer felt afraid. Um, other approaches termed dream engineering are trying to modify nightmares as they occur, so as we are asleep and in the dream state. One dream engineering device, the Dormio, 
uses spoken prompts to direct dream content. The Dormio device is basically a glove-like wearable that has sensors in it which can detect muscle flexion and also heart rate and electrical activity in the skin. So these measures change as you drift off to sleep. So the Dormio can detect when you're falling asleep and at that point trigger an audio prompt to direct what you dream about. Um, this process is repeated multiple times, so you fall into sleep with the prompt to direct dream content and then you wake up and you report your imagery. And through this uh, cycle, you can engineer dreams around specific content. So in my studies, we've actually used the sleep onset state to re-script bad dreams. So for example, one of my participants had a bad dream that she was cornered in a dark alley um, by a tall and threatening man who was approaching. So in one session, during the sleep onset state, um, she wanted to reimagine this dream, but observing it from the outside. So she was in the sleep onset state and she imagined watching the dream as it occurred. And so she was watching her dream character and she noticed that in the alley next to her, there was actually a red fire escape that she had never noticed before. So in a subsequent session, uh, as she went into sleep onset, she reimagined the dream again and she started to walk up the red fire escape to escape. And as she got two steps up, she just turned around and she looked down at the threatening man and he simply turned around and walked away. So this slight shift in perspective, first observing the dream from the outside and then ascending two steps and looking down at the man, this enabled the dream to come to a new resolution and she no longer felt any fear um, in response to the dream. In theory, this sort of sleep onset rescripting could be paired with the Dormio device to help people to modify their dreams in the sleep onset state. Another dream engineering device with potential to treat nightmares is Essence, which basically is designed to release scent while you are asleep. So we know from prior research that exposure to a pleasant scent when you're in REM sleep is associated with more positive dreams. So the Essence device is paired with a wearable that can detect heart rate and respiration rate and possibly even EEG, um, brain activity. So the device could detect when you're having a nightmare if it detects um, faster heart rate and breathing and at this time release a pleasant scent to interrupt the nightmare or possibly give you a more positive dream. There are actually other apps and devices um, being developed that use similar methods. So one FDA approved app um, detects heart rate and respiration rate and triggers a vibration to interrupt a nightmare. So using these simple techniques like waking imagination or dream engineering, the dreamer is empowered to change their nightmares and find a new resolution from within. In my case, when I reimagined my tidal wave dream, I imagine at the end of the dream and I realize we're, we're both stuck. I'm completely unable to move and my ex is waiting for me with his hand outstretched. I decide in my imagination to simply allow the wave to come. So he drops his hand and we both stand side by side calmly. The wave crashes against the cliff, but it simply disperses at our feet. The wave was not as big as I had feared, and we're both okay. Separate, but okay. I hope in sharing what I've learned from my own experiences and what we're learning through research to bring more awareness and understanding around nightmares and how to heal from them. If you have nightmares or you know someone who suffers from them, the simple techniques that I outlined can really help. So thanks for listening.